you ever been raked over the coals? Sharon Horn Ells from here. <laughs> that was our idiom for Supersize Your Business today. This is day 1,271 of What You Up To Now. This is the spot where I just share and talk about what I'm doing as I transition from the brick and mortar corporate world of business to the online world of business, where I was in my past and where I'm going in my future. Now this year, I'm doing a little back and forth and doing some offline business things as well, primarily as a result of COVID-19. It has gotten me to jump back into the real world because I see a huge opportunity for uh, us, at least here in America, to create and bring different industries, different uh, things back to America that we have globalized for, I was going to say, greedy reasons and money um, and for growth and short-term gains and I want to see some of those things come back to America, so I want to participate in a lot of that. Not a lot of that, but some of that. The stuff that interests me where I know that I can make a positive difference. So, rake someone over the coals was our idiom today for Supersize Your Business. And I don't know about you, but I didn't know the origin of this particular idiom. It's from the day, the Middle Ages. In 1565, it was documented that uh, heretics, prisoners, used to be dragged physically, bodily, over hot burning coals as punishment and treatment and torture uh, and any kind of torture kind of of course makes me cringe but it's just reading that I can visualize that and then I think back to my life and when I was reprimanded severely or scolded or or I want to say beat out pitched out or yelled at by somebody because they thought I had done something wrong or they assumed I'd done something wrong I can think of uh, only a couple of examples of that uh, because People have learned a kinder, gentler way of behaving, especially in the business world. Some have, some haven't. And I always ascribe to the belief that we should treat people the way we want to be treated. So if I treat people well and with dignity and respect, I expect them to treat me the same way. And if they don't, I usually just blow them off because I know that it's about them that they're reprimanding me harshly or blaming me for something or yelling or screaming at me. It's more about what's going on with them than it is something that I've actually done. I didn't always feel that way, but in the last 10 years, for sure, I've gotten a lot more emotionally intelligent and aware of how we as human beings actually work. So as part of that, instead of just talking about being raked over the coals, I talked about 10 steps to get feedback to improve your leadership skills, which I think is a much more powerful way of approaching that. And since we're focusing on leadership for the, the better part of the month of July, with respect to our mm. idioms, I thought it was a good twist. Sorry, my alarms, I'm running late today. Our annual challenge this year is all about getting to know ourselves better and doing one thing every day that centers us and focuses us. And I really liked today's, it was about breathing. And I actually learned this, a similar strategy to this when I was a little girl. My dad taught all of us girls because you know, in a family full of girls, there can be drama. I don't know about you if you ever had drama with your siblings, but being girls all about a year apart, except my younger sister's like two years removed or three years removed, we, we maybe didn't always get along. There weren't always enough bathrooms for all of the girls in the house. And so we learned, and my dad taught us this, if you're upset about something, count to 10 before you respond. Now, sometimes we fly through 10, what if there was a 7, 8, 10, faster than anybody could imagine because we wanted to just respond and react. But today's was to breathe slowly and deeply and count down from 10 to one, which I think is a really powerful way to meditate. I personally think meditation is focusing on our breathing, focusing on something and concentrating on something to help us block out the noise of, of our life in the world and just focus on and let ourselves think and breathe about what's important. So I really liked our, our activity for today because that does help me to feel very centered and very calm and very relaxed. And when we're centered and calm and relaxed, we come up with better solutions than when we're frenzied and harried and running around like chickens with our heads cut off. At least that's how it works in my life. Our lives are pretty chaotic. I don't know about yours, but mine for sure has been very chaotic, especially well, when I was raising my kids, super chaotic. When I was going through my divorce, chaos. When I was running my businesses, chaos. When I was, uh, and now we've got grandchildren, so or I've got grandchildren and divorced, so chaos. Sometimes chaos, but children bring this joyous love and light and chaos with them that I I missed it in the last couple of decades since my kids have been well, they're grown up now. So as they've grown up, it's really refreshing and fun 
to experience and pay attention to how kids respond and react and view the world. Uh, you know, kids do not see color. Children are born not seeing color, race, differences. They, they focus on what's similar among human beings. And if we could get our politicians and our leaders to do the same, I suspect we would be a, a much better place. It isn't the everyday people that are acting the way the media and the politicians and everybody say we are. We're just not. It's not that we have these automatic beliefs. We don't have white privilege. We don't have racist feelings. I think that it's a game and a political ploy to get attention and get power. It's a big power grab and I think it's pathetic because it's hurting so many unsuspecting people, right? So that's why I always encourage people to think for themselves. So did a quick uh, video on and reminding people that the next Get Up and Go Challenge is starting August 1st, August 1st to 31st. Super excited about it. Again, have not had much time to work on it with the granddaughters and everything, but I am. I did start watching a couple of videos and I'm like, I cannot go back and watch all of my videos on this. It's hundreds of hours. I don't know if it's hundreds of hours, but probably in the last year and a half, I, I've lost count. I should take a peek and look and see how many videos are in there, but there's at least 30 days for times seven is 210. Some of them I did two videos a day. So there's hundreds of videos in there about the Get Up and Go Challenge, about making the change process automatic, tools and techniques and strategies that you can use that I've used my entire life and tweaked and changed. And we'll use many of those in the upcoming challenge to help install what I call the SOAP framework, just a framework, not just on our conscious level, but into our our subconscious by repeating it and doing it for different areas and aspects of our life to ensure and guarantee that everybody that goes through the challenge that does it will actually install in their subconscious a process just like we have subconscious programs running our breathing our our thinking our response our reflexes our bodily functions we can do the same thing with processes and, and things that we want to make automatic. We can automatically be a better communicator by installing different different ways of thinking and seeing and viewing and communicating into our subconscious so it becomes who we are and becomes automatic. That's what we do with the Get Up and Go Challenge. So you automatically know to filter through any change or challenge or thing that happens outside of you that is going to impact you through this filter of your own design that you create and put in your subconscious that will automatically deal with things. So by the time you consciously think about them, you automatically have a better way of dealing with them. You're coming at them from a position of strength, not in a proactivity versus reactivity. All right, that is what I'm working on. Granddaughter's gonna be here any minute, so I'm gonna sign off. Wish you an absolutely amazing day. Comments are enabled for this particular idiom, so for, for this particular video. So if you're watching me on Facebook, you can comment directly to me or direct message me. Or if you have any questions or concerns or comments, share in the comments below or ask your questions so that other people can learn. I love it when people ask questions publicly because chances are if you have a question, so does someone else, probably thousands of someone else's. And if we can answer it and help you out with your next step, I guarantee we can help thousands of people out with their next step. That's it. Have an awesome day and I'll of course be with you tomorrow.